All right, students, welcome to the classification of matter notes. Let's get started. Get out your science notebook, and here's the essential question. How can we classify matter using atomic level or micro level, as well as real life or macro level models? This chart is going to be really important for these notes. I would take some time right now and draw this chart out. We're going to be filling in each of these blank spots between this module as well as in a later module. So pause the video. All right, hopefully you had enough time to write that information in your note or to draw this chart in your notebook. Let's get started filling it out. So we're going to try to classify matter. And one way to classify matter is based on its composition or what it's made out of. Now, depending on what it's made out of, we can further classify matter as either a pure substance or a mixture. So we're going to talk about these two things. First off, pure substance. A lot of times we just call it a substance, but the word pure kind of gives it a little bit more definition. The pure substance is matter that is composed of only one type of substance. It's pure. It's purely that one substance. That substance can either be an element or a compound, and these are things that we've been learning for a while. So things like diamonds or copper wire or tubes filled with noble gases or baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate, or distilled water, which is just water. All of these are examples of substances, or we can call them pure substances because they're purely made of one type of thing. So here's a tank filled with a gas, and that gas is oxygen gas, and it's only oxygen gas. If we were to look at the micro level models or the atomic level, we can see that oxygen is made out of O2. It's just two atoms of oxygen chemically combined, combined together. And now this tank is filled with these oxygen molecules. And so we would call this a substance, a pure substance, because it's made of only one type of element in there. Another thing is a compound. A compound like this distilled water is a pure substance made of two or more different combined atoms, but it's purely made of that one compound. So distilled water, if you look at it at the micro level, we see water, it's H2O, or two hydrogens attached to an oxygen. And this distilled water jug is only made out of these water molecules. So this is a pure substance made of compounds. All right, so going back to our table, let's fill out that part of pure substances. We have either elements or compounds. And I would even draw micro level models or atomic level models of each. Elements, again, being only one type of atom. And they could be chemically combined. They don't necessarily have to be, as long as it's only one type of atom. Now, compounds, on the other hand, here's an example of a compound. There's two different elements chemically combined. But because it's a pure substance, there's a lot of them in there, as long as they're all the same. They're purely the same type of substance. Now, compounds, we can delve down even further. We know that compounds can either be ionic compounds, where they're made of metal and a nonmetal attached together, or covalent compounds where they're only nonmetals that are attached together, different nonmetals that are attached together. Right, well, what about mixtures? Mixtures are two or more different unconnected combinations of elements or compounds. So these ones are not chemically bound to each other. They can either be heterogeneous or homogeneous style mixtures, which we'll talk about in the next few slides. But here's some examples of mixtures. Here's a brass doorknob made of different types of metals that are mixed together in there. Soil has lots of stuff in it. Water, and I'm talking bottled water, has water, but it also has minerals in it as well. Soda has a lot of things like water and sugar and other stuff. And then gasoline has additives in it. All right, so what's a homogeneous mixture? Well, homo means the same. And so these are this is a mixture where the particles are uniformly mixed or they are the same throughout. We often call the homogeneous mixtures solutions. And you might want to remember that because we're going to delve further into solutions in a later set of notes. So if we take a look at this sports drink here, this sports drink, if we look in it, is made of two or more different types of molecules or two or more different types of particles in there. One of those particles is water made of H2O. And there's also sugar in there. Now this is a very oversimplified model of sugar, but we're just trying to show you that this is a homogeneous mixture because the particles are uniformly mixed. Notice that the water particles take up the entire container and they're uniform throughout. And the sugar molecules as well as all the other substances are also uniformly mixed throughout. There's also salts in there as well as other things that are all uniformly mixed throughout. 
Let's contrast heterogeneous mixtures with homogeneous mixtures. Heterogeneous mixtures are mixtures that are made with particles that are not uniformly mixed. And so here, let's take a look at a macro level model of a vinaigrette dressing. So this is a salad dressing made of things like vinegar and oil and water and spices. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the molecular model or the micro level model of that. So here we have our water molecules, H2O, and then we've oversimplified the oil and the spice molecules particles, but take a look, they're not really uniformly mixed. In fact, a lot of you who might be familiar with vinaigrette dressings, you even know that the oil and the water separate themselves into different distinct layers. They're not uniform and you would even have to shake it. But if you look at this particle here, you can see there's chunks of spices up here that don't appear down here. This mixture is not uniform at all. And so we would call this a heterogeneous mixture. So let's add those two models to our classifying matter flow chart. Notice again, we can see the micro level models and we can visualize how that might apply to macro level or real life models. Now, what about this other half of the classifying matter flow chart? We'll actually discuss this in a different module. So go ahead and hang tight on this one. We'll come back to it later. This leads us to the end of our notes. Let's take a moment to review and highlight key terms, ponder and ask questions, and summarize and answer the essential question to the best of our ability. All right, good luck.